Hi there, I'm Dr. McFerrin with DM Explains. In this video, we're going to be talking about convolution. So let's start by talking about the convolution integral. The zero state response, so y zero state of t, is given by x of t convolved with h of t. And in previous content, I have pointed out that h of t is just the unit impulse response. This is read as x of t convolved with h of t by using this asterisk in between them. But the actual definition of convolution, x1 of t convolved with x2 of t, is equal to, defined equal to, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x1 of tau x2 of t minus tau d tau. The common terminology that is used to describe the convolution integral is that you're going to flip one signal and then shift it across the other signal and take the integral as they overlap. We're going to see that graphically in a different video. What I want to do in this particular lecture is talk about some properties of convolution and do a few examples. What are some properties of convolution? Well, the first property is that it is commutative. So that means that x1 of t convolved with x2 of t is equal to x2 of t convolved with x1 of t, which is a lot like multiplication. Secondly, we know that convolution is distributive. So x1, I'm going to drop the of t just to keep life a little bit easier. But x1 convolved with inside of square brackets x2 plus x3 is equal to x1 convolved with x2 plus x1 convolved with x3. In addition, I also know that convolution is associative. So x1 convolved with x2 convolved with x3 is the same as x1 convolved with x2 inside of parentheses convolved with x3. Again, everything that I've said so far is actually very consistent with how multiplication works, which makes this a little bit easier to remember. The fourth property is what's called the shift property. The shift property says if x1 of t convolved with x2 of t is equal to c of t, then if I shift one of these signals, so let's say I have x1 of t convolved with x2 of t minus big T, which is the same as x1 of little t minus big T convolved with x2 of little t. This is the same as c of t minus big T. And if I shift both of them together, so let's say x1 is a function of t minus big T1, convolved with x2, which is a function of t minus big t2. The, this is c of little t minus big t1 minus big t2. The fifth property is convolution with an impulse. Convolution with an impulse. And x of t convolved with delta of t, that's my impulse, is equal to x of t. So when I take the convolution of a signal with an impulse, the result is just the signal. Property number six is the width property. If x1 has a duration t1 and x2 has a duration big T2, then x1 convolved with x2 has a duration which is big T1 plus big T2. One more property to go, and that property is the property of causality. Causality says that y of t, my output, is equal to the integral from zero to tau, h of tau, x of little t minus tau, d tau, as long as t is greater than or equal to zero, and it's equal to zero for t less than zero, 
And this is true for a causal system. The output of the system is going to be causal if the input signals are causal. Typically in a basic control systems or signals and systems course, you'll find that h of t and x of t will be constrained to be causal. Another note to make is that a causal system's impulse response is causal. Let's look at our first example. For a linear time invariant causal system with h of t equal to e to the negative 2t u of t and x of t, my input, equal to e to the negative t u of t, what I want you to do is to find the convolution or the output y0 state of t, which is equal to h of t convolved with x of t. Okay, here's what we are going to do. Since these are both causal, I know that y of t is equal to the integral from 0 to t of x of tau h of t minus tau d tau for t greater than or equal to 0. Well, I know that since x of t is equal to e to the negative t u of t, then this implies that x of tau is equal to e to the negative tau u of tau. And h of t being equal to e to the negative 2t u of t implies that h of tau is just e to the negative 2 tau u of tau. And then if I want to get h of t minus tau, all I do is I replace the, t, the tau in the previous equation with the argument t minus tau. So this is equal to e to the negative 2 t minus tau u of t minus tau. Now, since the integration is performed with respect to tau, the region of integration is as follows. It is tau is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to t. This implies that tau is greater than or equal to 0, and t minus tau is greater than or equal to 0. So u of tau, or u of t minus tau, are all equal to 1 because the argument is greater than or equal to 0, and u of t is equal to 1 for any time that the argument is greater than or equal to 0. The result then is that y of t is equal to the integral from 0 to t, e to the negative tau, e to the negative 2 t minus tau, d tau. Now this is with respect to tau, so we can pull out e to the negative 2 t to the front. So y of t is equal to e to the negative 2 t integral from 0 to t, e to the negative tau, e to the 2 tau, d tau. We can collapse these exponents together. So this is e to the negative 2 t integral from 0 to t, e to the tau, d tau. I still know that t is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so now I can actually execute this integral. This is y of t, or y0 state of t, is e to the negative 2t. And then if I take the integral of e to the tau, that's just e to the tau between 0 and t, which is equal e to the negative 2t, multiplied by e to the t minus 1 for t greater than or equal to 0, which is equal to e to the negative t minus e to the negative 2t for t greater than or equal to 0. So y0 state of t is e to the negative t minus e to the negative 2t u of t. And I can go ahead and box that in. Now what I notice is that both the impulse response characteristic mode and the input character characteristic mode appears as part of the solution. e to the negative t is 
the form of the input e to the negative 2t is the form of the impulse response. Both are appearing in this. Now to save some time in future problems, one thing that I might be able to do is use pairs from a handout table. That handout table is going to be difficult for me to put in this video in a way that you can see and use, but what I'll do is I'll put a link to it in the description below. That will speed up our life and make it so that way we don't have to do nearly as much integration. There are two more properties I'd like to discuss before I do my final example for this video. Let's say we're doing properties continued. Property number eight is a system response to complex inputs. This says that if x of t is com complex, so I have x r of t plus j x i of t, r meaning real and i meaning imaginary, this is going to result in an output y of t, which is y real of t plus j y imaginary of t. So in other words, if I have a, a complex input, then the output is also complex. And x r of t directly maps to y r of t using convolution. And x i of t directly maps to y i of t using convolution. The last property to discuss is if I have multiple inputs. When I have multiple inputs, we use superposition. In other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the response due to each input individually, and then I'm going to add them together for total response. So now let's do one last example. I want you to find the following convolution, e to the negative 2t u of t, convolved with 1 minus e to the negative t u of t. If I were doing this in a traditional classroom setting, I would let students work on solving this and then teach it doing some peer teaching. Obviously in a video that is not possible. So if you want to, you could pause the video and try to work this out for yourself and then we could reconvene. All right, so the first thing I want to do is recognize that I can distribute out e to the negative 2t u of t. So I've got e to the negative 2t u of t convolved with u of t, and then I have minus e to the negative 2t u of t convolved with e to the negative t u of t. We actually already did a convolution similar to this in an earlier example. So let's look at what we can find here. This first thing, if I look at the table which you can find the link to below, in the table I see that this one is pair number two. Let's go ahead and write that out. Pair number two says if I convolve e to the lambda t u of t with u of t, I'm going to get something that looks like the form one minus e to the lambda t over negative lambda u of t. Lambda in this case is equal to negative 2 and so this should be equal to 1 minus e to the negative 2t over negative negative 2 u of t. So I've got the first part put together. Then what I want to do is I want to look at the right hand side over here. If I look for this in my table, I'll find that this is pair number four. Pair number four tells me what happens when I convolve two exponents together. It says if I've got e to the lambda 1t u of t convolved with e to the lambda 2t u of t, I get e to the lambda 1t minus e to the lambda 2t over lambda 1 minus lambda 2 u of t if those lambdas are not equal to each other. So let's write that down here. I know I've got e to the lambda 1t minus e to the lambda 2t over lambda 1 minus lambda 2 u of t as long as those lambdas do not equal to each other. Well, that's the case that I have here. So I will take minus here, and then I should have e to the negative 2t minus e to the negative t 
over negative 2 minus a negative 1 u of t. If I put all this together, this is 1 half minus 1 half e to the negative 2t. Let's put that in parentheses, multiply by u of t. And then I have this minus sign, I'm going to cancel out the minus sign below. So this is going to be plus e to the negative 2t because 2 minus 1 is 1. So e to the negative 2t minus e to the negative t u of t. Since both things here are multiplied by u of t, I can combine them together. So I'm going to end up with the following. I get 1 half minus 1 half e to the negative 2t plus e to the negative 2t minus e to the negative t, all times u of t. And then all I have to do is combine stuff together. This is going to be equal to 1 half minus e to the minus t plus 1 half e to the negative 2t, all multiplied by u of t. And that's my final answer. In the next lecture video that I will be doing, we're going to talk about how to do convolution graphically, which in some cases helps us if I don't have the information I need on the convolution table. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.